something, but I began back in the day, and uh, there's a gentleman coming on later, a part of my reality, that studies ufology and has done me on video in Canada and with prior functioning with Revolution Radio and Thomas Reuben Becker, also known as a mad painter, and T.R. Becker. So uh, let's see here. Someone's coming on. Uh, it may be early. It may be. Let me look. But uh, the fact is, yes, I have, I'm an alien ET contactee, and uh, I'm very proud to have a lot of friends in social media. And uh, Porsche 914, what's area code 914? I don't know. That might be Brian coming on uh, early, uh, which is fine. Uh, But uh, we will get started with sharing. I've had a spiritual group, a metaphysical group, and a UFO group since as long as I can remember. But it was uh, J. Allen Hynek in 85 on an airplane, and I was supposed to meet his secretary, in Denver, and since I met Jan Aldrich, that all this with CUFOs, MUFON, all these organizations, I was never allowed to be in because I was real law enforcement or private investigator or legal investigator in and out of country. I went to Africa and Spain and Japan and all over. But uh, I just happened to meet Brian through Revolution Radio. I think it was 2018. But it was as a friend of mine, T.R. Becker, that asked me to be involved with Brian. So Brian came on my show with a mad painter. I asked him mad to come on, but uh, he didn't. Let me see who this is. Area code 914. I'm turning your speaker on. Is this, who is this? 914. Hi, um, this is Katie. I had called your show in the past. So I just saw you're on and wanted to listen um, to what you're doing this evening. Well, thank you. Oh. And your name again is Katie? Yes. Yeah. I called you a few months ago. Okay. And Katie, what area what? might you be in, Katie? Yeah. What area might you be calling from? Oh, New York. That's what I was thinking. New York. Ah, New York. Okay, okay Katie. Well, thank you for joining us tonight, Katie, and we will be doing, uh, I I do readings on Thursdays, and Richard and I may do some at the end, if that's what you're accustomed to. Are you one of the Katies that has called in for a reading prior? Okay. <laughs> well, we'll, be, we'll okay. be doing that. We'll be setting up a platform for Thursdays, you know, and it'll be mini readings, and, and if you want a more prolonged reading, then, of course, you can, uh, you're welcome to contact either of us in private. Um, okay. But many readings, you know, we will address whatever question happens to be on your heart or mind, and then we'll basically bounce it off between the two of us and give you whatever we get, more or less. Um, I used to do the, the like. I used to do the like as such with Andrew Aloha out of uh, Arizona, and we did that for a couple of years, and we used to have quite some success. We were very. We had lots of people calling in because everyone was always of the mindset that they needed an answer. Now, of course being realistic about the whole thing, okay, speaking from the spiritual being that I am, I would tell you, Katie, that you always have all the answers that you ever need within your own being, okay? But it's fun to be social, and I love, you know, talking to new people and meeting new people and getting to know them and all that kind of good stuff, because that's what we're here for. It's what radio is all about, is reaching out through the airwaves and influencing people in a positive manner, whatever way it may be. So we sincerely do appreciate you at least listening in. And you have a blessed night. You as well. Thank you so much. Lovely speaking with you both. I'd like to listen to the show. Well, sure. thank By you. I hope minds. you learned something. Thank you, Katie, uh, for supporting too. us. Thank you. I hope you'll hit our like on the outside of blogtalkradio.com. Uh, if you guys can get on the computer, it's blogtalkradio.com. And my brand for since 2012 is TJ Mars ET Radio. And, yes, we do have a lot of followers. And I'm going to mute you, Katie, but thank you so much. And don't forget, uh, we have Suzanne Thursdays. And I think that uh, uh, Dr. Knight may pick up Wednesdays with me, but we're going to work out a platform Wednesdays and Thursdays. So I'm putting you on mute. And back to the story, uh, yes, uh, that, as you can see, I'm uh, known as the Cosmos Ambassador. 
<laughs> and that's how I got my uh, Halloween gig. And folks, after being in television and having shows, and then I got to be Michael Jackson's, uh, one of his many psychics, God bless him, passing over, but he got in touch with me. When he was passing, I, he wasn't even at the hospital yet. So uh, that was pretty interesting that people can communicate even if we've met. And my grandmother did the same thing. So I have a lot of stories to tell, too. And some of you have heard them through the years here and there. And uh, I haven't really done what's called a timeline, sitting down year by year. And uh, that's one thing Richard's been doing, and uh, I look forward to maybe getting that done. But not everybody wants to expose everything they've ever done. But Dr. Richard tonight is our platform specialist for tonight uh, on Saturdays. And uh, I don't know what all that's going to entail other than ACE Metaphysics, which is what was the main core, which actually Katie found us. She watches TJ MarCT Radio. And uh, Ace Metaphysical Institute with Dr. Knight because he is a specialist, as you've heard, but he'll also help us in the last hour with ufology. Now, uh, Dr. Knight, as we start going forward in the future in 2021, we hope to raise the consciousness universally. And as you said, we're both universal life enlisted in Modesto, California. I haven't been with them as long as you have. I've, I've got my company and my Ascension Center, and my name, Teresa J. Thurman Morris, and then Teresa J. Morris out of Kentucky. But they're all me, folks. So what I was saying was Susan had found my Beaver Dam, Kentucky address and my phone numbers on her Apple. All right. So I have moved yes. from Kentucky. So yes, she's every- now in Gulf Breeze amongst the alien ETs that like to fly by there and drop umbrellas down every night. So anyways. <laughs> so have you been here at the Gulf Breeze or Pensacola in your lifetime, Dr. Rick? Yes. Yes, I've been to Pensacola. Matter of fact, one of the most famous seafood restaurants I've ever been to in my life presented me with one of the largest lobsters I've ever seen. It must have weighed a good seven pounds. And that's very large for a lobster. But anyway, it took <laughs> up it took up what we would call a platter plate. And boy, I tell you, it must have taken me almost an hour and a half to eat the poor thing. <laughs> but anyway, well, then I also had a, a not so good experience in that I went swimming in the ocean at the end of a end of the sea run, I guess you would call it, because basically the street basically turns into a parking area, and there the ocean is right there in front of you. But I just must have chosen the wrong day because I went down to about thirty feet, and I unintentionally swam into a bevy of uh, oh, what they call them? Oh, don't go. I had it nine a minute ago. But anyway, um, the ones that sting you, uh, jellyfish, that's what it is. Oh, jellyfish. No, jelly, jellyfish, jellyfish, yes. And I come upon a man of war, and he laid he laid his tenders upon me, and my life flashed in front of my eyes. But fortunately, I was <laughs> easy, easy, easily gotten back to the beach because I'm a very strong swimmer. And, you know, uh, I had learned that, of course, what? that the, the most instantaneous okay. way to get rid of the sting is that you go into a bathroom and you use a cup <laughs> or, or a container of some kind and you nur- urinate in the same, and then basically you pour the urine on yourself and the urine basically detoxifies all the all the toxin that is emitted on onto your physical self through the stings of the man of war and other various jellyfish. So anyway, I did that and it worked. So the experience was kind of not so good, but at the same time it was interesting because even though I'd swum a million times in the Pacific Ocean, I'd never run into jellyfish. So that was a first-time experience there. Oh, sorry you ran into it here. I ran into it in Galveston when I lived in Houston, went to school there, and uh, Galveston caught some those little spikes. Boy, that oh, I remember that to this day. That is some pain. And then the, we would have oh, yeah. an Adolf meat tenderizer, and we didn't know about peeing. Maybe Mother did, but later on, I think we started doing that, taking turns. And I think I saw that on Survivor, which, by the way, folks, it's right about four minutes till the hour. But I just want to mention, I heard that Survivor, uh, which I like to watch, and Dr. Rick uh, was nice enough to share a few of his TV shows he likes because uh, I keep up with IMDb and Rotten Apples, and I've thought my company, American Communications Online, 
not only are we going to help uh, the metaphysical, spiritual, paranormal shows, but uh, other things in reality shows. And he and I both watch uh, reality shows. Sure, on the hour here, are there any shows you'd like to mention? I mentioned Survivor, but due to 2021, I don't know if they had time to film any, and I'm really disappointed. But anything for 2021 that you'd like to say that uh, – what for entertainment purposes uh, on the hour for spiritual well, people sure. or reality? Well, sure. I would, like I, I, I would recommend Supernatural, uh, although I wouldn't put a whole lot of stock and trade in it because a lot of it's Hollywood and special effects and so forth. But there's a great deal of spe- uh, storyline there, some of which is actually based in truth, although the truth is rather smattered about because it's Hollywood, of course. But anyway, I like Supernatural. It's quite entertaining. Also, like, um, let's see here. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Um, let's see. The History Channel is very good. They have lots of documentaries about lots of different subjects, including uh, ancient aliens. Okay. Uh, that's a very good series that's ongoing. Um, and it tells the history of the interaction between ETs and mankind. And it, it's done what quite eloquently, and they have a great many guests. Do what? You said Discover. What were you watching? Is it Discovery Channel? They, folks, we've gotten, into, we've gotten, just so you know, into live streaming. That uh, When I watch on my big TV uh, for pleasure, entertainment, and education, uh, and spiritual shows, all of the above, uh, you know, I can't tell the difference. I've got a lot of YouTubes. I know some people are going to bit shoot, but there's all kind of new channels out there, and I still have cable. But uh, a lot of people get these fire sticks. And uh, they go, they just pay for internet only nowadays. But uh, Dr. Right. Rick, how, uh, how do you do it? Do you, uh, like I have cable, but do you have uh, internet and then you can watch Prime or uh, Yes, Google I have, I have internet. I have internet so I can watch, I can watch HBO shows such as uh, a very good one is, uh, let's see, I can remember it now. But the storyline is, is very, very intriguing and very interesting. Oh, don't go it. What's the name of it? Well, um, you can bring it next week. You can, you know, any yeah, because on mean, the hour, there's, there, there, we can mention yeah, some. There's, yeah, there's all, there, there's all kinds of them out there now that would never have even been thought of, say, 20, 30 years ago, because it just wasn't the fad then. Now, of course, people are becoming more and more aware, more and more enlightened, more and more metaphysical and their out, outlook and their approach and so forth. And as a result, the entertainment industry is finally following the trend that has always been in bookstores for the last 50 years. Um, well, we know there's I was ghost delighted. paranormal. What about the Bigfoot yes. shows? Now, I know that when I was in Tibet in one of my past lives, we left some of the big feet behind or the Yeti to protect the Tibet because we left some extraterrestrials on the Tibetan mountains. I don't know why. I think now that we're supposed to be going from the third, fourth, and fifth dimensional level of consciousness, we're supposed to be awakening and raising our consciousness to allow the overlays and the dimensions now, and we can get into that. Yes, uh, yes we can. With, but again, with you know, because um, I mean, basically, we have created, some would call it two timelines, some would call it uh, navigational futures. Some would call it all kinds of different terms, but what you're basically saying is that, okay, those who have chosen to awaken all the way have now gotten off the fence and decided that they're going to take that reality by the horns and develop themselves to the degree that they actually begin the ascension process, which basically the ascension process will lead you all the way up to the 12th dimension eventually. But as we are beginning here on Earth and most of Earthlings or general per- persons most likely would start at the third the 3d matrix which is where we're at right now and you would ascend which would mean that your awareness expands out to the degree that not only do you see 3d but you also see the fourth dimension overlaid over the 3d so that makes you very aware and very intuitive and very telepathic it also improves a lot of other skills okay so it expands from the sense of being that basically you're beginning to incorporate more of your true self into your physical, mental, and emotional consciousness as a human being. So basically you're becoming kind of an interdimensional being. If we progress on down this timeline, 
All right. There are two timelines now, and they're at a juncture, and they will soon be splitting only a very minute distance apart from each other. 